So now what? Having had all this conversation, where are you now? Is the answer to just like you say, chill, relax, continue to pray and meditate and follow your heart's desire? So let's talk about pray. Yeah. What, Excuse me, more meditate than prayer. It's all right. Yeah. Prayer is good too. But yeah. when you pray, what is the content of your prayer? All my thoughts are prayers. Positive, loving, good. In situations that I judge harshly, to remind myself to see what God's not seeing. We're right on something really important. Yeah. So, a prayer that comes from an awareness of need is counter to your value. A prayer of open, outward, even vocal appreciation is a prayer that aligns you with all that you desire. And when you say, I'm in a constant state of prayer, it means you're in a constant state of asking. But, ooh, this is such an important thing that we're just standing here on the brink of. Because in your awareness that you are asking to move from where you are to a different place, there is a blockage. That's why we're asking all of you to be less aware of where you are in relationship to anything. Can you feel what we're talking about? A prayer of appreciation. What would a prayer of appreciation sound like? It's beautiful. The sun shining. The sun feels good. It feels great to sit on the deck and watch the wind in my face and see the harbor and the homes and just the flow and the energy of it. All right, that's really good. Now, it sounds a little conditional because you were looking yeah. at beautiful things when you did it. Uh, you were looking uh, at beautiful conditions. So under those conditions, it's easy to offer that prayer. But it might make you become a little conditional in nature. So can you offer a less conditional prayer? Appreciating wherever you're at in terms of... I started this conversation with the blessings of seeing the negative. Still conditional. Still conditional. It's not quite what we're reaching for. Okay. Can you feel an unconditional prayer of appreciation? So if it's conditional, it's the harbor, it's the beauty, it's the ship, it's the water, and all of that's good for you. Don't no. misunderstand. But it's still conditional, which means if you're in pain or if someone was rude to you or whatever, then if you're trained to the condition and you're having an emotional response to the condition, then you're sort of like most people. You're just responding to what you're seeing. And often you're in contradiction of your own desire. So an unconditioned, let's just call it for a moment, an emotion. So an unconditional prayer or an unconditional offering an unconditional moment in time would sound a little bit like this I love the feeling of clarity I love the feeling of recognizing how source feels about me I like this feeling of well-being I like this sense of security that I have I like understanding that I'm an extension of source energy. I like the idea of source energy. I like the feeling of source energy. I like the concept of source energy. I like the concept of my inner being. I like my awareness of my inner being. I like the feeling of awareness. I enjoy the feeling of clarity. I love the subject of momentum. I like the idea of law of attraction. I like the bigness of this universe. I like the flowing of thoughts within it. I like knowing that I have access to infinite intelligence. I like the feeling of the flow of thought. I like being an extension of source energy. I like being here in this leading edge time space reality. I like the beauty of this time space reality I like the variety of this time space reality I like knowing that this time space reality is giving birth to ideas within me I like the power of those ideas that flow I like knowing that when an idea hatches within me that I'm not the only one who has that idea I like knowing that source within me is in on that idea with me I like the extension of that idea I like the occurrence of that idea to me 
I like the desire that is born within me. I like an understanding of the value of my beingness. You see how unconditional this conversation was? You see what we're getting at? Not very meaty for you in many cases, but it was an unconditional. In other words, if you follow this and if you flowed with this just a little bit, you were in a state of unconditioned there. You were floating freely with the source within you. So as you do more of that, what begins to happen is that all of the blockage stops when you meditate and you quiet your mind that's what happens when you quiet your mind you stop thought and therefore you stop resistance and so there's no contradiction within you but by having this conscious conversation about these unconditional things what happens is you begin to steady yourself you begin to accomplish a vibrational set point that establishes a different category within you it's a category of knowledge it's a category of knowing it's a category of love it's a category of clarity it's a category of well-being it's a category of love it's a category of appreciation and do you know what a consistent aligning with that category then brings you in terms of law of attraction it brings you fun people to play with it brings you more ideas it brings you rendezvousing with beautiful things it puts you on your deck at the moment that the whale jumps out of the water that category then yields to you conditions so can you feel what we were just accomplishing here we were approaching it unconditionally which wasn't easy and didn't feel natural to any of you but as you stay there long enough and you accomplish that then what happens your set point moves your point of attraction moves and now you finally got your own tiger by the tail you now are in control of what comes to you and most are not in control most of you are observing what's going on it's sort of reacting to life so as you're reacting to life you're having emotions that you don't feel any control over because you really don't have control over them because you had a category going on within you that you didn't know you had going on within you and so things are coming to you that match that and then you're trying to sort it out the long hard way so what this conversation was about was about proactively in advance pre-paving your vibration in order to accomplish your point of attraction before it comes what do you think about that when you wake up in the morning that's your best opportunity to do just that because while you slept the momentum of any set point or any vibrational category that you had going on before any emotional vibrational category that you had going on before is now subsided almost completely and so as you sit offering your prayer of unconditional appreciation can you hear what we're guiding you to because if it's a conditional appreciation there's a trap in it because every subject is two subjects and so you think you're appreciating your children but you might be more worried about them than you are appreciating you might think that you're appreciating abundance but you might be more worried about not enough abundance than you are about abundance so by approaching this unconditionally you have a much better opportunity to establish your vibrational set point and then your day will revolve around this vibration which is your point of attraction that you then can observe and then after a while your observation fuels what you do want and that's really what you intended when you came into this physical time space reality you knew that there was enough that would inspire you to desire but you didn't plan on getting so stuck in step one we're happy to have had this conversation we're happy that as many of you as did enjoyed it we're not worried about those of you who said when is this going to be over <laughs> because it's never going to be over until this clicks in and registers with you until we are able to convince you that you have the ability to tune your tuner to well-being and if you will do it before you have anything else to think about then the things that will show themselves to you today will be things of well-being that really is what this conversation was about and we liked it a lot And are you refreshed? Good. 
Now what? Thank you. Hello, Abraham. <laughs> My question today is, I've been studying a lot of entrepreneurial successful achievements, all those kind of seminars, and I'm, I'm a bit confused with many of the successful teachers and gurus of personal development and success say that success is on the other side of your comfort zone. You know, they say things like, we must do things that are uncomfortable in order for us to grow and learn. I just wanted to ask, how does this fit in with the path of least resistance and following our bliss and only doing things if they feel good? It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but we know what they're talking about because contrast does give birth to desire. Just before segment of refreshment, we came to a strong culmination that we want to pick up from, especially in light of what you're talking about here, because contrast puts components into that vortex or into that vibrational reality, that law of attraction helps to gather momentum. And if you are in the receptive mode, then often you receive an idea or a desire or an inspiration or an impulse. So of course, it takes some of all of that in order to give birth to the expansion that you will always be about. But at some point you have to deliberately and consciously contour the frequency of your being to match your own desire. And so since we know about the vibration of a question being different than the vibration of an answer, if you stay in the vibrational frequency of the question, the question, the question, the question, the answer will never occur to you. If you are continuing to beat the drum of a problem, a problem, a problem, the solution, which is a totally different frequency, cannot occur to you. And so, of course, contrast is important to the whole, but you all have put enough components into your vortex that there are enough ideas ripe and ready for your reception to keep you busy for 20 or 30 lifetimes. So the idea that one must struggle or one must strive or one must push through the uncomfortable in order to be comfortable is really going about it the hard way because well-being is dominant sometimes by persevering even under uncomfortable conditions and things still turning out well, it can in time cause you to sort of relax and realize that it's going to be all right. But it is a mediocre and very slow way of moving forward. And it isn't what you intended. You are genius creators who know about energy, who know about vibration, who have the ability to focus your thoughts in a direction that allow you the maximum benefit. And it is our promise to you that once you have launched a desire and you are moving forward in any moment and feeling uncomfortable in that moment, you've pinched yourself off from your true resources and from your true ability to receive the right impulse at the right time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. For example, I'm writing a book right now and my mentors who are working with Bob Proctor, who shared the stage with you on The Secret, he is all about trampling the terror barrier, breaking through, doing things that you would not normally do in order for you to grow. So if we don't do those things, if I don't go into the doing things of things, I just feel and I just meditate every day and I think about what I want, my outcomes. If I don't go and do those uncomfortable things, I feel like I'm not getting anything done. You see, done. don't misunderstand. We're not saying don't do them we're saying do the meditating do the aligning do the getting in the receptive mode until you are a receiver of the inspiration and then follow through with your action on the inspiration that you've received we're talking about aligning and being inspired to the action rather than pushing yourself from your awareness of what you don't want okay. this teacher does not know the secret 